So we'll, we'll kind of start off and Ryan and I are just going to banter a little bit back and forth. There'll be some parts that are a little bit more legal oriented and some that are more tax oriented. But as uh, was earlier mentioned, a lot of these things are uh, very closely connected. And so hence, we thought a great idea to um, uh, talk together about this. The general partner, limited partnership. So we'll go through some reasons why we might want that and I'll, I'll let Ryan kick it off there. Uh, yeah, thanks, George. Um, so as, as George said, you know, general partnership, limited partnership structure, why would you want one? Um, well, I mean, the first point there talks about legal protections for the limited partners. So as the name suggests, the investment parties into this kind of structure get to limit their liability through the partnership agreement to just the funds they're putting in. So not that anybody wants to lose any of their capital investment, um, but uh, it, it is a possible risk whenever you're doing anything that you could lose uh, your investment. But in this case, with a limited uh, general partnership structure, the limited partners, which uh, as we'll, as you'll see as we talk further into the into the evening here, um, the limited partners are in fact um, essentially hands off capital only investors. Uh, the GP, the general partner is going to be the one that's active. They're going to be managing or through a management company managing the projects, managing trades, uh, dealing with law firms, accountants. They're doing all of the the sweat equity and all of the work in the structure and the partnership, limited partners are essentially uh, almost always passive, hands-off, investment only. And so for an example, if I was a limited partner in a million dollar fund of 10 limited partners and we all put in 100,000 even, um, then if the, the worst thing that would happen would be I would lose my investment of the 100,000, but I'd be limited to that. Whereas the general partner, unfortunately, has, as it says, sort of general and infinite liability, depending on the other terms of the partnership agreement. Um, the second point, and then I can always flip back over to you, George, is uh, it's easier for the GPLP structure to consistently and constantly bring in investment, and especially as it would relate to probably larger projects. Um, so this isn't to say that you couldn't do a GPLP structure for smaller projects, like smaller size land development or smaller um, just real estate in investment opportunities like duplexes and those sorts of things. But as we talk about this later into the evening as well, you'll probably see it just, it doesn't make a lot of sense to use a GPLP structure for that. Um, GPLP structures as George and I have probably both seen relate to like your larger apartment complex uh, acquisitions, uh, land development opportunities, potentially land and building opportunities. Um, but they're definitely typically used with larger size projects, um, especially where you may need to go and get a larger pool of investors and or be looking at larger dollar figures basically as well. Um, so it's easier to just consistently bring people into a fund, uh, well, which, which is the partnership structure, uh, as opposed to trying to do it with um, one or two like big fish on a JV agreement or one or two or three uh, corporate shareholder investors. So uh, that's where the GPLP structure can be so beneficial to is on larger projects. George? Yeah, and I, I agree a hundred percent. And it doesn't necessarily mean in terms of a, a large project that, I mean, it, it doesn't need to be a $50 million acquisition by any means, mm -hmm. but uh, we're, we're also not talking uh, about a million dollars either. I, I've certainly seen them for a few million dollars, um, even the $5 million area, even less. But, but often, and we'll see as we proceed along, as Ryan said, that there, there's a fair bit involved. In, but once we have perhaps almost a template set up in many ways, at least for the, the bulk of a structure, 
then it's a lot easier to repeat in future projects. And a lot of people will go to invest into that from a tax and a legal perspective as examples, take care of financing, get the program into place. And now it's a rinse and repeat. Uh, you, you see the comment, the limited partners aren't typically providing financing guarantees. I'm, I'm not going to say that that's always the case. Um, it's certainly from my observations, exceptionally frequently the case, but um, I, I'm sure there's contrary examples. And, and that's another reason why people tend to like seeing uh, or, or investing in an LP structure because typically they're going to be, if using a corporate structure as a shareholder, uh, re required to guarantee some mortgages. In, in terms of the uh, next comment there, you'll see a flow through. And what we're referencing there is in many cases, a wealthy investor will be chatting with a tax advisor or an investment advisor. And they like the idea Rightly or wrongly, I'm not necessarily as admittedly as big of a fan to this particular component, although I still get what I want in a slightly different way. But the limited partnership itself is not taxed. It's the owners of the limited partnership units that receive the tax. And, and so a lot of people like the fact that that income flows through the limited partnership directly to the owner and the owner pays whatever tax is applicable to their particular situation as compared to sharing a tax situation with all the other investors. I think we, Ryan's really touched on the pooling of funds to take on those larger projects. So if we have that ability to bring in more larger investors that they're attracted to different concepts with the limited partnership, then clearly we, we can tackle larger projects and pool those funds. The last point there is to say, and, and again, not to say that everybody's going to want to have a private read in the future, but it is more tax efficient and easier to convert from a GPLP structure into that private REIT. And in fact, that private REIT is really just adding a component on top of what I'll call the structure. So again, today, we may not be interested in that private REIT, but perhaps we're interested in setting up two, three, five limited partnerships over the next few years and then consider, but not be required to convert to that private REIT structure. So again, it's something that can be more efficient in allowing us to scale up even further um, than we might otherwise be doing. 